Thank you, Nathan. Thank you very much for the invitation. So I switch uh, gears a little bit uh, back from a lot of phonology um, to a lot of morphology. Uh, here's some uh, preliminaries concerning morphology and subgrouping, my, uh, uh, basically my talk here. So the major advances of Indo-European historical comparative linguistics in the last 50 years were made in the morphological uh, internal reconstruction of the pre- or proto-Indo-European nominal and verbal system. Um, maybe not uh, accidentally, um, due to progress in and uh, incorporation of uh, the understanding of the two major branches discovered 100 years uh, ago, namely Anatolian and Tocharian, which will figure more prominently uh, in a minute. And I'm a Tocariologist and always strive for making Tocharian great again. Um, so this will, of course, figure here prominently. Um, and maybe not accidentally, uh, due to progress in uh, incorporation of general linguistics in our understanding of historical linguistics concerning these ad advances uh, in the last 50 years. Um, compared to other traditions um, uh, and other, uh, well, historical linguistic family traditions like uh, uh, Semitic historical comparative linguistics, Indo-European linguistics is a bit of a late bloomer um, concerning uh, higher order uh, subgrouping, uh, that is subgrouping uh, above the level of the attested daughter languages uh, and basically between this level and the Proto-European level. Um, today I think that's kind of fair uh, to say only Proto-Indo-Iranian as a higher note is completely uncontroversial. Uh, though, this is also fair to say, uh, the systematic reconstruction of Proto-Indo-Iranian is uh, still in its early stages. And uh, I think Martin Kümmel is working on a book on uh, the reconstruction of Proto-Indo-Iranian. Uh, and this is another caveat concerning Indo-Iranian. Uh, there are, of course, issues with the status of the Nuristani languages and uh, the exact affiliation of sub-branches within the Iranian part of the family and uh, we will hear about Nuristani uh, at this conference. Um, so if you looked uh, or look at current handbooks, you basically, you kind of get this big bang uh, tree, uh, the everything out of Indo-European all at once, uh, which of course cannot be possible and which is uh, uh, kind of strange. And we are one of the uh, historical fields that still get away <laughs> with presenting our tree like this, uh, and we should not get away with that. Um, the underdevelopment of subgrouping uh, in Indo-European, uh, Indo Indo I should really be able to pronounce that, uh, is due to several factors. Um, one is a long-term focus on archaisms uh, rather than on shared uh, innovations, uh, a focus on lexical items, uh, rather than on shared non-trivial uh, innovations in the morphology uh, and um, a negligence toward the reconstruction of the immediate ancestors of the attested daughter languages uh, of a branch. Uh, we already talked a little bit about Indo-Iranian, uh, but for example, in my specialty, we have not even really started to systematically reconstruct the morphology of proto uh, to carry. Um, we're, we're basically in the process of doing this. Um, but this negligence, of course, is not uh, negligence uh, because some people don't want to do it, but partly also some fields like Anatolian and Tukarian saw rapid development uh, in, in their uh, understanding the philology in, in the linguistics um, and these new uh, uh, discoveries are just in need of uh, incorporation uh, into our reconstructions. Um, okay, so the sub-branching that has been proposed uh, of course uh, figured very prominently or Anatolian figured very prominently uh, in this uh, because it is very different from the other languages and it has become widely accepted that this otherness uh, of Anatolian, uh, otherness where uh, in verbal morphology, so rarity of so-called 
simple thematic presence. These are uh, basically presence that are formed with uh, an uploading O A uh, lack of uh, perfect, as we see uh, in, in Indic and uh, Greek, for example. Then in nominal morphology, lack of uh, feminine gender. So there's no feminine gender in Anatolian. And a uh, very important lack of participles with uh, fixed diathesis built on the tense x spectral stems um, that at least Greek and the oldest Vedic have. Um, and uh, so this otherness, uh, as we just uh, uh, examined in this sub um, subgroups of uh, linguistics of Anatolian is due to its Anatolian branching off first. Um, in this scenario, uh, the other languages share a common ancestor. So basically what we get is proto european Anatolian splitting off first, and then whatever comes next. Uh, and the different, different people call uh, this stage with different names. And I will also have one uh, uh, later, so we'll, we'll come to it. Um, there's uh, now a gr growing camp over the last uh, 20 years or so that takes uh, Tocharian, the other language that was kind of recently discovered and almost at the same time as the Anatolian languages. Um, also, well, split off early and split off uh, second after uh, Anatolian. And the arguments uh, for this are quite uh, similar to, to the ones found in Anatolian. So uh, lexical archa archaisms, um, so we did not have that and, and these will go eventually. Uh, verbal morphology, uh, again, rarity of simple uh, thematic presence, uh, lack of perfect uh, in the nominal morphology, otherness of uh, the feminine morphology, and lack of uh, participles with uh, fixed diathesis built on tense aspect stems. Uh, so basically, uh, what these people who proposed the Tocharian split the first uh, think is we have proto european Anatolian, whatever you call this, then Tocharian, and then what I think is now almost established uh, in, a, in the European with sub-branching that has not been figured out yet, but with uh, the other languages coming uh, uh, after Tocharian has split off. Okay, so what uh, to do? Uh, I follow or try to follow uh, Mark Hale here since the reconstruction uh, of Indo-European was done without much in the way of higher order subgroups and since the precise characterization of the inflectional properties of individual nouns and verbs at the Indo-European rather than the Proto-European stage and of classes of nouns and verbs and of the system as a whole is a task which has, to be, uh, which has not been seriously undertaken at this point. I think it's necessary to start to systematically trace um, the evolution uh, of individual morphemes and the morphosyntactic features and systems of morphemes and their morphosyntactic features regarding shared non-trivial morphological innovations. Uh, and in the following, uh, the focus will be on the participial uh, system of, of Indo-European and how Anatolian and Tukaren fi uh, fit into this. Um, Participles, as we saw, already have been in the discussion, and Anatolian does not have uh, anything like uh, the other languages. And for Tukharian, this was also uh, uh, proposed. Uh, then the association of nominal morphemes, of participial uh, morphology, with the verbal system can be considered, I think, a non-trivial innovation. Uh, and therefore, potentially lead to new insights in the understanding of the evolution of both nominal and verbal systems in the European languages generally and uh, regarding, of course, subgrouping. Okay, so uh, these are our participles in what I term here uh, Brugmanian in the European. Uh, Brugman uh, wrote the great uh, Grundriss uh, of the European languages, so the system of reconstruction before Anatolian and Tukharian was discovered. Um, my uh, former teacher, Jay Jasonov, in a recent paper wrote, and I like this expression, the ink on the Grundriss was not yet dry, and then suddenly they discovered Anatolian and Tocharian, and basically the whole Grundriss would have had to be uh, remodeled, um, but it wasn't. Anyway, so we start uh, with the Brugmanian uh, system here. Here are our morphemes. These are 
participles in a strict sense and uh, this year especially the to is the verbal uh, adjective. Uh, the ont is uh, associated with morphologically active verbs. Uh, it shows up loud uh, and the morphosyntax is basically uh, the same morphosyntax than the associated verb uh, has. Uh, Muchno is the medio passive uh, participle, um, non uploading, uh, and again, morphosyntax associated with uh, the verb. And medio passive means that uh, it is associated with, inf with finite verbs that are medio passive. And then we have uh, the, the was us perfect, which is uploading. Um, it is associated with finite perfect. Um, and uh, again, the morphosyntax depends uh, or is exactly the same as, uh, as uh, with the finite verbs they're associated with. And then to, uh, basically, uh, also non-uploading uh, verbal adjective that kind of has stative uh, semantics. So if we look uh, uh, here, um, well, this distinction is not really important, but I just wanted to, to give it anyways. Uh, so the athematic thematic uh, distinction is not super important uh, for what is to come. But anyway, athematic just means no uploading or eval, uh, and thematic means an uploading or eval in the finite verbs, uh, and uh, no no upload in uh, the present. So uh, I give you Vedic in Greek um, as the classical Gugmanian in European languages. Uh, and, and these are always uh, cognate, right? So Tarant is a direct uh, correspondent of Didus. Barant is a direct correspondent of Feron. Uh, I have a pointer. Uh, Jant is a direct correspondent of Jon. Schravant is a direct correspondent of Rion. So they are super nicely uh, cognate, okay? Then uh, let's look at uh, Muchno. And here I just took the uh, medio passive uh, versions of the cited verbs before. So uh, Dadana is secretly uh, the, the, say, the mana, uh, but with some sound changes. But anyway, direct cognate with uh, the dominos, uh, Paramana, direct cognate with uh, Phenomenos. And here, uh, these are just blank because they are not attested, but uh, Reo uh, has uh, medio passive Reo mai, and, uh, uh, and we saw uh, Reon as the normal active participle, and here we see uh, Riomenos as the middle participle. Then here are was uh, uh, suffix or perfect uh, participle. Uh, here are just the third singular corresponding uh, perfect forms. Uh, so Jagara uh, from the root gar, uh, egregora from uh, the verb egero, and we get participles Jagarvas uh, and Greek uh, egregoros. Okay? And which I somehow humoristically translated as uh, woke. Um. <laughs> okay, and now we turn to, to the top participles. Uh, and here, um, a distinction of actions art, uh, of lexical um, aspect becomes important. Why? That you will see uh, in a minute in Anatolian. So, um, Stative, non-stative here are uh, uh, lexical aspect um, and the differentiation, so this differentiation will become important in a minute. But anyway, we get Peter from Pa, Potos from Pino, uh, Stita from Star, Status from Histemi, and they're completely nicely cognate. Gata from Gam, Batos from Vaino, completely cognate. Okay? Good. If we uh, look at the evidence uh, of all the uh, Bukmanian in European languages, we basically see uh, some that behave very nicely, but the fact is, are, uh, are what I tried to show, that in the Iranian Greek, there are very nice cognates for uh, anti muchno was to and actually uh, also Baltoslavic has uh, anti muchno uh, was um, the to becomes in most of the languages kind of a new uh, specialized perfect participle, uh, um, passive uh, participle, like we know uh, in, in Latin. Um, and we don't have to go over all that, but I mean, some languages don't behave nicely, like Armenian. We have relics of the system, but the system as such is gone. Um, and of course, the same is true for 
uh, Albanian uh, and Celtic. But this is just to give you an impression uh, that our, uh, our, of course, our nicest languages are in Iranian and, and Greek here, but for all the other we have to assume the same system. Okay? Good. Yeah, now let's look at Anatolian first impressionistically. Uh, Muchna is not there, Was is not there, Tor is not there. And uh, Anti uh, is kind of there, uh, but uh, it is a verbal adjective exactly like the To in the uh, Brugmanian in European languages. Okay? Uh, to, to show you this, uh, again here is a lexical aspect. So, uh, if, if we have uh, Quenzi to kill, uh, um, Kunant means killed, exactly like Potos from Pino. Uh, if we have uh, Stative uh, uh, Arta uh, stand, then we get uh, Arant standing. And if we have a uh, non Stative uh, Aki uh, die, uh, we get Arkant died. Okay? So it's exactly, we have exactly like the two participles. In the, in, the, in the European languages. And uh, if you want to look for the gory philological details, consult the excellent dissertation of Michael Frotscher, uh, who basically tracked every single NT at the station in uh, Hittite. Um, okay, Laura Geistenberg and I, uh, and she will speak uh, tomorrow, um, we um, tried to reconcile the uh, NT in Anatolian with the NT in the rest of the languages because kind of before we did that people started to think well NT is so different in Anatolian that this is just a thing that looks like the NT of the other languages but it's something completely different but uh, I think it's easier uh, to come up with a way of um, bringing all of these together and uh, we did that in assuming that uh, uh, basically NT was original the nominal, the radical, possessive, which in Indo-European jargon means uh, adjectival uh, suffix, uh, like we actually see. So, burg, uh, height in, in Burris or uh, burgs, uh, Gothic uh, castle, and bergont, having height high, uh, like in uh, a Western uh, Burrisant and uh, Burhand. Or, uh, so this was the original function, and that we uh, see also in Hittite. So, we have nada, read, uh, and we get nada and having a read. Reading. So this is the first step. The second is in Anatolian, uh, this was reanalyzed as a resultant state. So we, we have our denominal here, and then they transferred this kind of concept on uh, the verbs, um, and we get uh, uh, kind of what we saw before. So we have a, a resultant state interpretation of this NT, and this is how we get the, the verbal adjective um, in uh, Anatolian. So what happened in the post-Anatolian European languages? Well, we also have a reanalysis re as a resultant state, uh, but this is then further uh, interpreted as uh, processual. Um, so we, we saw our uh, denominals here, so Börres and Hai to Börres Height. Uh, and this is actually a very nice example, because here we get, uh, in, in Vedic Jivan, we, we basically get the, all the steps that we need. Uh, for our explanation. This was originally denominal and meant having life. And from having life, uh, it got this uh, resultant state interpretation, being alive, and being alive, of course, is living. And uh, with this processual um, uh, interpretation, uh, uh, this one expanded uh, to the other uh, verbs, to, to non-stative intransitives, uh, like yant, going, and then further to transitives, and here we go we have and carry. So this is what we uh, assume. Um, now let's look at uh, to carry. Um, we find uh, the NT like in Brugmanian uh, in the European, we find Muchno like in uh, Brugmanian in European, and we find uh, was us like in Brugmanian in European. Uh, and we're not sure about the status of to. Um, stay tuned. Um, I've argued against, uh, well, yeah, against one of my own teachers, Melanie Marksan, uh, that all these participles in, in Tokarin, Inter, Muchno, uh, behave exactly 
like uh, like anti movement participles in the Brugmanian languages. Uh, before they were kind of uh, uh, thought to be like um, agent nouns of some sort, but they're real nice participles and directly correspond uh, uh, to their finite verbs. So we get Brentscher uh, Brand. This of course directly corresponds to uh, Barand uh, and Ferron. Um, carry and carry, we get Klientscher Klient, standing to stand, and we get Jenenscher and Jant must exist, but we just accidentally <laughs> don't have it. Um, going, uh, go. We just have not so much to carry in A as to carry in B. I mean, the, the difference is like we have 80% more to carry in B than we have to carry in A, but Jant must have existed. Uh, then uh, let's look at the Muchno uh, guys here. So uh, Trunkmane, uh, Trunkman from Trunk, uh, say for oneself, being said. Premane, Purman, caring for oneself, being carried. Yenemane, Yeman, because we also have finite uh, passive or medial inflection of the verb. Uh, we have uh, going and then Katkemane, Katkman, uh, being glad from uh, the root being glad. Uh, or, or the verb. Good. And then uh, finally our uh, was, and they come in reduplicated and non-reduplicated uh, forms. Uh, so our osh, so this is the uh, so-called oblique. Um, uh, our osh, uh, o osh, uh, uh, u osh, they all get, go back to was with different uh, vowel things happening. Uh, but believe me, they all go back to was. was. Um, and here we, s we have uh, uh, Kursa or Kurso, um, and here we have a reduplicated one, uh, Kekamu, Kakmu. And of course, this is the same root that we have here, uh, the Gwem root uh, to go. Uh, and, and actually, these are directly cognate, right? Uh, Kekamu is directly cognate with uh, Chaganvas and uh, Beba Os. Here I gave you just the, the finite forms. Uh, the only difference is that the reduplication vowel into Karen uh, is an O, but this is just the copy of the root vowel uh, into the uh, reduplicant, which is kind of trivial innovation. Okay, so let's take stock again. Um, and now we're talking about our uh, suffixes here in the participial sense. Anatolian uh, does not have the NT in the participial uh, way, uh, does not have muchno and does not have was, us, but to carry in basically behaves exactly like uh, the Brugmanian and European languages. Um, so uh, here is the development. We start out with the denominal possessive NT. Uh, in a soul we get the verbal adjective. And uh, Brugmanian and European, which now includes Tocharian, has the innovation of associating NT uh, with active verbs, Muchno with middle verbs, uh, and was with uh, perfect. And here's a, a slight twist uh, here, namely the origin of the perfect participle. Uh, here I, I follow uh, also one of my teachers, Jeremy Rao, uh, who assumed that uh, the originally the perfect participle started out as a deverbal uh, adjectival use them derived from the perfect or directly uh, from the root. So we get uh, basically, or perfect, and then we get uh, which is this uh, derived use term, and we kind of have this, uh, uh, I mean, they're close enough uh, related, so chagara is our uh, finite perfect, and then uh, we get chagaru, uh, awake, as the participle, uh, or for a, a theoretical derivation, we have wait, and we get weiru, uh, we dev, this is one of our accent upload classes, uh, and this is also directly attested. So this is the first step to go uh, to the perfect participle. The next step is this adjectival use them uh, created a neuter as them abstract. So we start here with this U uh, um, adjective and we just add an S. I mean, we, not the proto Europeans, added an S and made this uh, into an abstract. Uh, and there are, there are parallels in the living languages for that, like uh, tapu hot, and you can make an abstract by directly adding an s, and uh, you get tapush in Vedic uh, heat. Okay. And here's the 
third step and then we are at the perfect participle origin and that is this neuter abstem abstract uh, made internally derived that means by changing the accent upload pattern um, uh, uh, basically uh, acquiring here uh, an amphikinetic, so-called amphikinetic animate estem with this kind of uh, upload behavior was us that we see in the perfect. Uh, and this uh, amphikinetic derivative from state of being awake was one who is awake, or <coughs> as I translated it, woke. Um, and uh, vidus and one who knows uh, knowing. Okay, and parallel for getting uh, an animate amphikinetic noun from uh, an uh, neuter abstract is, uh, for example, Greek PR, which means fat substantive, uh, and then we get animate pion, um, fatty, as an adjective. Okay, but this means, if we believe Jeremy, and I do, uh, this means that in order for to carry in to have this particular was that is derived from a new stem, you have to have had the perfect. And this means to carry and inherit the perfect. Um, and then we can look at uh, to carry again. Uh, what is the evidence for having uh, for it having split of second? Um, lexical archaisms uh, um, in the verbal morphology, rarity of simple thematic present, lack of perfect, uh, otherness of the feminine morphology, lack of participles with fixed diathesis, built on dense aspectual stems. Lexical archaisms have to go because lexical changes are unpredictable uh, and should not be used for subgrouping arguments. In the verbal morphology, um, oh, sorry, nominal morphology, otherness of the feminine morphology, I showed that Tukharin just uh, got normally inherited uh, both the IH2 feminine and the EH2 feminine. Um, and we can talk about that, uh, um, but this was not part of, uh, of this talk today. Uh, lack of participles with fixed diathesis, build on tense, spectral stems has to go. That's what we saw. Uh, lack of perfect has to go, because we have the perfect participle, and the perfect participle says, at some point, the language had a perfect. Well, it changed the perfect, but so did other uh, in European languages. Latin uh, uh, made a new preterite category that is composed of perfect and aorist, and something similar uh, must have happened to Tocharian, and we have to figure out exactly how this uh, worked out. So we're left with rarity of simple thematic presence and accompanying things like uh, thematic optative. That is interesting. Tocharian does not have uh, a lot of thematic presence, does not have a thematic optative. But anyway, what we see not so many arguments for to care and having split off second. Okay, uh, here's just a, a little preaching uh, because uh, to care in subgrouping is very often reinforced by arguments that are not from linguistic. Uh, so artifacts without inscriptions are not linguistic evidence. Mummies are not linguistic evidence. Uh, genes are not linguistic evidence. And uh, this is just uh, an aside and uh, to kind of kindle your interest. The earliest linguistic evidence for Tukharian speakers near uh, uh, Xinjiang where the texts were found and where they are attested over a period of 600 years between uh, 400 uh, CE uh, and 1000 CE uh, are furnished by loanwords. And this is ongoing work with uh, 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 Bill Baxter. And here are just some good long loan words, but this is basically just to kindle your interest uh, and, and stay tuned uh, in this respect. Okay, so to conclude, participles with uh, fixed diathesis, build on tense, spectral stems are a shared innovation that happened after Anatolian split off. The Tukharian part, uh, the Tukharian branch was part of this major innovation. Uh, Tukharian inherited the classical uh, Brugmanian in European perfect. Tukharian inherited all participles in their classical Brugmanian in European value. Uh, and later, of course, changing bits and pieces like almost everyone else except our precious little friends, Greek and Indo-Iranian. 
Uh, what's the perspective? The perspective is tracing the evolution of individual morphemes and their morphosyntactic features and systems of morphemes and their morphosyntactic features regarding non-trivial uh, innovations. Uh, hopefully at some point soon reasonably computer aided and this will lead to modifications in the subgrouping and here's uh, Mark Hale again and since any modification in the subgrouping changes the value of individual data points for the reconstruction of the proto language we can anticipate many modifications to reconstruction as we finally do the work necessary to confidently establish subgrouping relations and what I presented here today was just a bit of how we have to change uh, individual data points here. Uh, and here is a good uh, Indo-European uh, sermon. Um, in order to do this, uh, the subgrouping, uh, the focus of the field, i.e. IE, should be on building uh, on and advancing the great achievements of uh, the historical comparative method in the morphophonology and morphosyntax of the Indo-European languages, instead of shaky evidence purely based on lexical items, or worse, combined with evidence of shady evidence of uh, population genetics, uh, and instead of deconstructing the system uh, that are kind of established uh, in favor of, of having membra disjecta and projecting every T-stem that looks funny in an individual language directly back to the proto-language, uh, uh, where we then get seven different T-stems instead of one uh, 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 T-stem, uh, which I uh, termed, I hope, to be not too rude here, uh, an elephomy, el uh, like infamy. Um, anyway, um, as uh, two Karen B speakers would say, yes, Palsko, Kryptonian, yes, so thank you for your attention.